Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Public Law right here on TammyPepperman.org as heard on No Borders Radio at NoBordersRadio.co.uk. We are a listener supported radio station one. If you'd like to donate, um, as well as our web hosting service, please visit us at TammyPepperman.org and click on the donate button right under the No Borders Radio player, which helps not only our website development, which is Tamworth Web development.co.uk it also helps No Borders Radio and keeps us on the air. How are you, Bo? Alrighty there. How are you there? Good. Great. It's been a, a, an interesting week. Tonight, I kind of want to take, you know, not, not downtime, but, you know, I want to, I want to celebrate. Sick of all this sadness and, and, um, you know, I think we covered some major ground recently, and we did some, some, uh, things. There's our co-host, the Sovereign Cat. Yeah. He's just practicing his voice. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, practice. Yeah. Well, we got some... Celebration here in the Attorney Surety Headline Roundup News will be hitting on. Awesome. Sounds great. Stock market hit some record highs this week. And yet again, all of them are celebrating, but somebody's happy. You know somebody's happy. Somebody's got those winning stocks. Yeah, well... The atmosphere out there right now is like oh no we got another high oh my goodness I'm gonna go home and and drink myself to sleep tonight boys it's just been profound North Korea it looks great the, the, he has been developing like crazy yeah wrestling today it came out that he's he's doing stuff with wrestling too I mean this is I love watching him grow and, and, you know, being able to have the freedom to do that. This is amazing. Yeah, right. The, uh, looks like the Japanese pro wrestling team arrived today and, uh, getting things started over there for their, uh, wrestling, uh, pro wrestling match and everything goes along with that. Awesome. Italy was there with their delegates today too, but I wasn't able to catch that story yet on, um, you know, what's going on, but it sounds interesting. It sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let me dig some of that up here too. Uh, what else? What else is going on since yesterday? And I had a big show yesterday. Lots of uh, oh, it's good topics on it's the been uh, so leaving the farm show yesterday. Found it, it's been absolutely um, just beautiful, actually. Uh, where was that? You know, when I first started out, the world was populated with females falsely accusing males and getting away with it because they can And effeminate males. Right. Right. Like it, some of these shoes out here on Skype. Right. Uh, it, but that gave them leverage, you know, and they, they use that as leverage for so long and apparently that's unlawful. And I'm from kittyvr.com, woman convicted for falsely accusing men of kidnapping and raping her. Really, Colorado. A Weld County woman was convicted of three felonies Thursday for falsely accusing a young man of kidnapping and raping her. Catherine Elizabeth Bennett, 21, claimed a male acquaintance took her from a Safeway store parking lot in Windsor on November 24, 2013, and subsequently raped her. But her story, which changed several times, was later proven false, prosecutors said. Over the course of the investigation, Bennett deleted text messages proving that her initial report was false and carried on with a fabricated story, police said. Quote, because of her initial report, a Windsor man was arrested for investigation of serious felonies that caused him to lose his job and damaged his reputation in the community. 
prosecutor said in a media release, quote, he was not charged, but the hardships due to his arrest and the publicized allegations continued for this young man who testified that he nearly lost his military career as well because of the false allegations from a woman he considered to be a friend. Bennett will be sentenced on October 24th. She faces up to nine years in prison. Nine years, huh, for false allegations. Well, I mean, she ruined a guy's life, and this happens all the time with these false allegations. And the funding from the uh, IMF through uh, special drawing rights is okay. allowed under the rules of feminism to um, let these women get away with it time and again. It was, until they lost their funding. And now... The women can't get away with it. These psychopathic females, you know, it, it's not profitable for a corporation any longer for the female to falsely accuse the male. Everything's based on evidence and under the public law. It's more profitable to hold people accountable under the public law. Yeah, well, that's the name of the game. We offered a better business model because... No, I mean, let's face it, this thing, this United States Incorporated, it's just, it's just all business when it comes, when you cut through all the evil and uh, corruption and uh, human yeah. trafficking and genocide behind it, you know, uh, it's just business, so we had to uh, come in there and facilitate the better business model to uh, get things turned around. Absolutely. And see, what was beautiful to see is that Normally, in a rape case like that, he would have been facing about eight years, eight, nine, ten years, you know, up to twenty years, and and to see that she's now facing that same amount, it's beautiful. That's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's what she, her intentions were, to get him rung in there, and uh, criminalize her for whatever reason. And uh, it's beautiful to see the uh, equal measure finally. Yeah, well, got, like I said, lawyers, a.k.a. attorneys, getting arrested for stuff that, uh, unbelievable, you know, I mean, we've got, uh, Greenville, let's see, here, seeks AG opinion on Texas lawyer's request for arrest warrant and affidavit, let's see here, this is, uh, Texas lawyer here just pulled this up. I thought this was breaking, but let's see here. Uh, sign up for membership. Uh, headline read: uh, so lo may, Lawyer may, arrested on murder charge, yeah. but somebody wants to beat you under submission through advertisement. Yes, TexasLawyer.com. Will you expect? They have your fee schedule. Yep, TexasLawyer.com. You got my fee schedule. So Funny. good for you. No laws and exceptions shall be passed. Public law. It's interesting. Of course, we covered that story uh, actually um, on my channel, on my uh, uh, Bowen Rockwell Show Wednesday. The attorney that was arrested and charged for murder for hire plot. Oh, yeah. In charge of Bear Tree. Yeah, the one that was going to whack his former partner. That was interesting to see. Former employee. Somebody ratted him out, and he was going to whack him instead of facing accountability. These attorneys are all chickens. They, they don't even act like men. Do you, do you realize that? I mean, it's so, it, it's so obvious that they're the effeminates that are spoken of in the Bible. Yeah. No honor, absolutely no honor. Absolutely depraved, bankrupt. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, what do you expect from primates? Science said that they were all primates this last week or so, two weeks. I mean, I mean, they don't create anything or build anything uh, besides misery. I mean, that's, that's why I went into this quote-unquote profession, because it's easier to just, um, you know, siphon money off of uh, everybody else that does produce. Right, unsuspecting victims, hapless victims. 
the terrorists. And that guy got to pay five hundred dollar fee fee on you know his bail charge. Right, renting children from a judge. That's what they charge uh, for an hour's worth of work, which. Uh, you know, you'll never get an hour's worth of work out of an attorney. <laughs> right. And it wasn't that. That guy was charged and, and allowed out on a $500 bill for, for preying on children. And we know their work. I mean, the, the work that they, they do and they are uh, handling you or someone as a client, uh, they write up these briefs and everything like, oh, how, you know, horrible these uh, marijuana charges are in Texas, but this isn't Texas, this is Michigan. Right, right. That I one, saw uh, that one, yeah. The, the guy was getting royally, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, mentally sodomized by his own attorney. And, the, and the, the attorney was rolling on the guy, and it was sad because the guy bought it. He he thought he needed that attorney, and he got a royal, uh, royal hand job. Well, it was interesting. Uh, I was there, and he, you know, he, he, he tried to fire the uh, attorney out in the, you know, the, the waiting room before you go into the court, yeah. and uh, he said, no, we have to do this on the record, you know, and said so to make a big spectacle about oh, it in he, the courtroom. Yeah, he went in front of their jurisdiction. Oh, terrible. What a mess. Well, that's before I was even thinking about, or knew really what was going on with the uh, jurisdiction and such and um, he uh, he had to fire this attorney though and and this attorney you know you know even though he's getting fired he made sure to get that uh, brief of his on the, on the record that motion Every the motion dis to dismiss which was more convicting than the <laughs> allegations against him absolutely absolutely Every word is worth gold for those shysters. And, and I think that's the reason that I'm laughing is because I've seen that thing. And that attorney was, he was pretty much whipping his client on behalf of the judge. More, more trouble more trouble in uh, Texas, so from the Dallas News, McKinney attorney arrested on aggravated assault charge. McKinney attorney Rebecca Hendricks Brewer, who served as interim Fiscal City Attorney was arrested Thursday for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. She was released from the Collin County Jail after posting $25,000 cash bond. The arrest stems from an argument that stated Monday evening with her boyfriend. Started Monday evening with her boyfriend, Michael Bula, according to an arrest warrant affidavit. Brewer, 46, is accused of holding a 38 caliber handgun on Bulla, shooting outside the windshield of his truck and cutting his arm with scissors. Evil! According to the document issued by the McKinney Police Department. Michael was fearful Rebecca was going to shoot him, the affidavit stated. Absolutely. Yeah, well, when you're holding you're a gun and tight. pointing at somebody, that's usually a good sign they might shoot you. Right, obvious. Um, let's see here. The affidavit was was included as evidence in a motion filed Thursday by Brewer's ex-husband, Greg Brewer, former judge of the 366th uh, District Court. He resigned his position in 2009. Wow. Greg Brewer sought a temporary restraining order against his ex-wife in custody of their three sons, ages 15, 13, and 11. The motion was granted Thursday, cited serious and immediate threat to the safety and welfare of the children. Oh, so wow. she's gonna lose her children. Oh, that's terrible. She was terrorizing that guy. Father's Murder. motion also states that a minor child recently became highly intoxicated and had to be hospitalized while Rebecca uh, Brewer was taking care of him. As him, she wasn't babysitting. It sounded like she was setting it up to sexually abuse a child, getting him drunk. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, I won't put past anything. Why else would you get a child drunk? Ever. For any purpose, unless you're a predator of them. Rebecca Brewer, who's listed as a director with the law firm of Abernathy, Roeder, Boyd, and Joplin, could not be reached for comment. Sick. Brewer's, uh, Brewer fills in when Frisco City Attorney Richard Abernathy is unavailable. 
She has sat in on many meetings, including with City Council and the Planning and Zoning Commission, to offer legal advice. Meeting minutes list her as filing or filling in as City Attorney as early as March 1999. Yeah, that's why she was getting the kid drunk. She's with the Development Committee. Through, she's planning and development. Brewer also handles legal issues related yep. to public records requests for the city of yeah. Frisco. Oh. There's that word issues again, yeah. which means offspring. So good. She good recently idea. sought a legal opinion from Texas Attorney General's Office for information requests from multiple media outlets related to a double homicide in Frisco. A 16-year-old boy was arrested on suspicion of fatally shooting his parents on August 11th. I wonder why she was involved with that. Yeah. Well, she had a drunk boy at her house. No, she needs to be further investigated for the that murder because you know who benefits when a child's parents are all gone down? The attorney that takes over the estate. Oh, yeah. Works. They've played this game forever. Not enough is enough of this game. We're not going to kill people's children's parents in order to whisk them off into the safety of family and probate court to the financial benefit of attorneys and judges. Well, that's so what, uh, in part, the case was about. Was these critters have been uh, found guilty of genocide and human trafficking. So, let's see. Lawyers for arrested federal judge say he is taking the situation very seriously. An Alabama federal judge arrested in Atlanta last week has hired Cal County District Attorney Jeffrey Brickman to represent him on pending uh, criminal charges. That's an interesting twist to uh, hire another district attorney. It's a funny looking game there. I think that doesn't give a name here. Um, well, he could possibly could be that Mike Mark Fuller guy. He could be uh, tampering with the jury. You might want to look into that one and see what's going on. Because hiring another district attorney, maybe he sends him in to talk to the other one or whatever. No more back channel deals. You know, that's sick. Yeah, attorney work product doctrine is what right. has got gotten us into this mess in the first place. I thought you, he's trying to hire himself the good old boys club. It's interesting. Yeah, let's see here. We've got uh, San Jacqueline County District Attorney candidate Gary Hickey arrested on suspicion of assault. Ciao. Gary Hickey, a candidate for San Jokin County District attorney was arrested Saturday on suspicion of assaulting a woman while he was intoxicated at his home according to Sergeant Steve Maynard of the Lodi Police Department. A woman whose name has not been released also resides in the home. She called the police to press charges against Hickey at 9.15 p.m. Saturday. Hickey was arrested on suspicion of misdemeanor assault. Uh, the arrest came about 24 hours after Hickey was arrested on suspicion of causing a disturbance on uh, Friday night. Wow, he's just out of control, isn't he? Yeah, he's nuts. Hickey was found at around 8 p.m. Friday outside his home carrying a bottle the officer suspected contained alcohol. He was taken into custody but released at 2 a.m. Saturday morning. Two incidents are the latest in the series of accusations leveled against the candidate. Crazy. He was arrested in August of 2013 on a hit and run charge. Uh, let's see here. The San Joaquin. Joaquin. I think it's Joaquin. J O A Q U I N. I like Joaquin. Me too. <laughs> Anyways, uh, County District's Attorney Office opened a case against Hickey in February, and he appeared in San Joaquin County Superior Court on May 13. However, his trial on that charge was postponed to June 9th when the deputy of, uh, for the California Attorney General's Office can take over prosecuting the case from the San Joaquin County's District Attorney's Office. Oh, interesting. 
In that case, Hickey has said that after crashing into a telephone pole, he sustained a concussion and walked home to sleep it off. Hickey's yeah, also that's not advisable for any human beings. Don't go to sleep after you hit your head. That's always not advisable. Hickey was also arrested in April of 2014 on suspicion of driving under the influence. That case was turned over to the state attorney general's office, which has not yet decided whether or not to file charges. Yeah, yeah, he's trying. Hey, yeah, he's, he's trying not, hard. He's, he's like a terrible person. Earlier this month, a man claimed Hickey assaulted him, resulting in a dislocation of his hip. Terrible. Lodi police have uh, turned the case over to the district attorney's office as well. To determine whether charges will be filed. Well, well we don't know. We don't know if we can file charges against this attorney or well, not. You know, evidence, he, he's evidence. one of ours. No, not. Oh, wait a minute. We got this great entry here. Oh, sorry, there, Mr. Attorney. We're gonna right. have to. Yeah. yeah, we'll watch it, but he's going down. He's going down. Taking one for the team. They yep. should do fundraisers for their defenses. You'll be able to argue this case though in North Korea. Absolutely. No, he he allows everybody to buy their rights there. It's awesome. It's the Democratic uh, People's Republic of North Korea. It means everything that's up for sale. I mean, it could be a dem democracy or a republic at any given moment in time. It's an amazing, amazing place. Well, we've got that one uh, we covered last night where the main lawyer is charged for possessing child pornography. Yeah, that guy's sick. And, uh, yeah, I actually had uh, this uh, shoe on, on Skype that goes by the handle Master Lewis. Oh, yeah, he's an agent through the and through. Is defending this attorney, saying, Absolutely. "Well, it's past the statute of limitations." And Absolutely, he doesn't want anybody charged with child sexual abuse or anything. Right, because he's probably got some kind of history of himself. I deal than there himself, and, and that, that's the only reason that they would define a pedophile is if they condone or participate in the profession or benefit off of it in some way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he's. Continuing with his uh, self-incrimination, uh, you know, about wow, these false, well, and false allegations against Rocco, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely, that's the reason. I sent him the case got file. It's up, uh, it's up there in the uh, Dropbox. He's, I said he's got to point the finger away from himself. Sure, he does. We'll see how that works out for him. Doesn't want accountability coming down. It's been interesting these last few It's not days. a good time to pretend to be a lawyer either. Yeah. We've got this uh, from the Gawker.com, Brooklyn lawyer arrested for not actually being a lawyer. Ooh. Here we go. Can we say practicing law? Country. I mean, uh, this guy's impersonating uh, an attorney. Impersonating a fiction. That's like <laughs> more insane than insane. The man accused of identity theft was in a federal court today after he was exposed as having impersonated Stephen G. Dickerman, a lawyer with an office in Brighton Beach, Brooklyn, that has been involved in at least 12 federal cases since 2012. As arraignment today, the man's lawyer insisted on the charade, telling the judge, I can clarify that the name of my client is Stephen G. Dickerman government has really no idea who the defendant is at this point, Prosecutor Land Nigan said today in court. Not even the man's fiance is sure who he really is. Oh, this is funny. They had a question of his reality. And automatically he's a felon if he claims that dead name, remember? 18 U.S.C. 1342. Sure. That's funny. Owing to the man's unconfirmed identity, the judge denied him bail. <laughs> this is too much. This is too much celebration. I don't know who this gentleman is, Judge Raymond <laughs> E. Rise Jr. said. 
According to the New York Times, the man took advantage of the lapse <coughs> law license of the actual Stephen G. Dickerman, a lawyer with a 40-year career. No, I, from, that was from the, the American. Real, the real fictional name and address. Right. Funny. Yeah, he so. We couldn't see him because he said, "We, Dad, we don't know who he is. He's lost at sea. Oh no." Yeah, in 2009, an individual claimed to be Stephen G. Dickerman showed up at the <laughs> registration's office and received a copy of the delinquent notice form, which included the lawyer's social security number, date of birth, the law school he attended, and his <laughs> attorney <laughs> registration number. He was rolled on by all the other attorneys. That's funny. They just gave him all of his information. That's terrible. In the section of the form allowing for changes in personal information, the man claiming to be a lawyer wrote that his name was Shomo D. Dickerman and listed a new business and home address, the affidavit says. He signed the form and paid $350 registration fee. When Shomo Dickerman paid his registration fee, the next year he, he included a letter explaining that he was using the first name Shomo because it was a, his Hebrew name. He's claiming all sorts of titles. <laughs> the name change was was not made, even as Shomo filed subsequent requests because legal documentation was required. To assume Dickerman's identity, the Times reports, the fake Dickerman also listed having received a law degree from New York University. The impostor would charge $400 an hour for his services. He's a real boy, just like Pinocchio. He He's did. <laughs> He did not appear necessarily to be a good lawyer. He didn't appear to be a non-lawyer, David G. Uh, S. Stone of Stone and uh, Magnemini told the Times. But the FBI was apparently suspicious early on and began the investigation. Not a good show. I like this one. Let's see here. By the summer, federal authorities had become suspicious. At a seemingly routine hearing in July on a class action case that the suspect had filed two months earlier, agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation quietly observed the proceedings. One of the agents had already met the real Stephen G. Dickerman, the <laughs> affidavit says. Two weeks later, two FBI agents posing as potential clients arrived at the Brighton 11th Street address of the suspect. Taking notes on a legal pad, the man said he would represent his client for a $10,000 retainer and $400 an hour. Wow. He handed over his business card. It read Shomo G. Dickerman, J.D. L.L.M. Esquire. According to Sheep Shed Bites, authorities raided the fake Dickerman's office earlier this week, and none of the other lawyers there had been charged. Prosecutors suspect. Uh, based on the driver's license found on the suspect when he was arrested by the police, that the man might be Stephen H. Dickerman, who appears to be a disbarred attorney with a criminal history. <laughs> 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 Megan said Stephen H. Dickerman has been convicted twice of grand larceny and spent three years in prison. Prosecution is awaiting, is awaiting results from a fingerprint analysis. I suppose that's why he didn't renew his uh, bar cards, because he was in, in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy, nobody knows who he is. He's lost. Not a good idea. Somebody needs to go salvage him. He needs to be looked for. <clears throat> you know, it's not a good idea to uh, impersonate an attorney at this time. <laughs> Not a good idea. Well, it's good. Well, it's good for him, us. You have him running away, and then you have him pretending to be attorneys. That other one was, uh, what did she do? She whittled off her fingerprints or something. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no fingerprints on that female that's trying to... Escape? Yeah, escape. <laughs> yeah, speaking of escape, I found one earlier. I'll have to dig it back up. Where this female attorney apparently, uh... Uh, she, she's getting in shape here for the battle, I guess, uh, preparing to make her run. Uh, she swam across uh, from um, uh, Canada to, to Michigan, I guess, in a, like a 13-hour swim. Wow. Across the Great Lake there. 
must have been uh, eerie. Here, I'll look that one up. It, it, uh, it's an attorney? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh, th they like to run and stuff. I don't know why, uh, but, you know, my second, yeah, my second cousin who retired as an attorney, uh, he runs marathons and stuff. He's still to this day, and until they catch him, I guess. Great. If you start out at North Korea, that's an awful long swim. I don't know why she'd be preparing. <laughs> <laughs> I think call, that was. The call w. the immigration police. You can. Uh, let's see. I'll dig that one up here because I just thought it was interesting. I didn't really uh, put it on the show notes because it was kind of a tongue-in-cheek one here but oh yeah I know um several attorneys they just like to run and run and run get ready yes um, those be the good ones that uh, will you know get selected for competition in basketball matches and stuff right. and against the inmates and they uh, Kim Jong-un is talking about that getting an Olympics into North Korea yeah yeah, that's a, uh, boy, let's see, Sturgis firefighter, accused of inappropriate relationship with a teen, Joshua Snyder, 36, is facing four charges of criminal sexual conduct, that's in Sturgis, Michigan, Sick. and, of course, uh, Notre Dame had to suspend another player, for tomorrow's uh, game on... Who's going to uh, be playing? Who's going to be playing? Well, yeah, there's uh, nobody left. Who? Who's your lineup? Oh, they got plenty of players. It's just they lost uh, three of their key players with those four that were indicted for uh, academic fraud. Is there somebody in the back end back fixing or something against them? Sounds like they're trying to make their team lose. Taking all their key players. Yeah. Well, like I said, they just lost another one for tomorrow, so... What if somebody's bat fixing? You might want to investigate. Uh, let's see. Who was that story? Didn't they just lose their concessions? Uh, the... Yeah. Let me pull that one up, too. Uh, it was interesting because I was thinking, how do you, how do you have a like a sport competition if you lose all your food and drinks and stuff? How many people are just gonna sit there and watch a sport if there wasn't like booze and stuff? Makes you wonder uh, if patriotism is the camaraderie with others and, and sitting there watching a football or baseball game, or if it's the game. We shall see. The other day, it looks like they were being sanctioned or somebody. Somebody was being sanctioned or something, and Notre Dame had lost their concession company. Well, maybe give us your take on this one here because I, I found this one kind of interesting. Is it Kellogg trying to save face or something at this time or what? But Kellogg Foundation gives uh, Michigan State University six million dollars for food says the W.K. Kellogg Foundation um, has awarded um, six million grants to the East Lansing School for Research and Outreach Programs to promote access to healthy food in the state. Right, and, and those kind of things, no, it's just a, it's a gimmick. They're, they're, it's an advertisement for Kellogg. So they, they say, we're giving you a grant, six million dollar grant for food. Well, Kellogg's is the food, so then that money goes back into Kellogg's anyway. It doesn't benefit anybody. Ah, okay, right. Okay, here it is. Detroit. A Girls Point lawyer has fulfilled the goal of swimming 21 miles across Lake St. Clair from Canada to Michigan. The Detroit Legal News reports that 47-year-old Sarah Colgrove completed the swim wearing a wetsuit to protect her from the chilly waters earlier this month. It took her 9 hours and 27 minutes to go from Walpole Island Indian Reserve, Ontario, to Gross Point Farms Pier Park. She says the swim went by really fast. It's all a blur. Cold Grove swam 
under sunny skies and face little boat traffic except for freighters. Friend K Inc. alongside her as a support. Old Grove has completed in several has competed in several triathlons and is an active bicyclist. She started training for the swim in October before the, her longest swim was five miles. Maybe she's trying to teach the other attorneys how to uh, integrate or migrate or something. I don't know. Everybody's up in arms about this ISIS thing, but that attorney just swam across the uh, Canada and Port American border. They're scarier than... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I've got allergies or something this day, but... Um, Attorneys are scarier than, than ISIS because those are ISIS's handlers. Right. We don't want them swimming across the borders. I yeah, I guess everybody's um, catching on to that uh, beheading video was staged or fake or, or something. I, I haven't even watched it, but I'm seeing a lot of chatter that everybody thinks that's fake. I don't know, um, I'm hearing from other journalists and things that, that, that uh, knew of him without having first-hand reports, and I, I just, unless I absolutely have to watch the video, I'm not going to because I don't like that kind of thing. But if that's a requirement, I'll do that. Um, it was terrible. Let's see here. Uh, it's just been you interesting. Got that, uh, uh, Emmy Cobb's Restraint of Man Factor and Death. This is from the MyFoxNewYork.com. The death of a drugged, emotionally disturbed man restrained by police near St. Patrick's Cathedral has been ruled a homicide. The medical examiner's office said a physical restraint by police Friday is a factor in Ronald Singleton's July 13th death. The medical examiner says a 45 year old was in an excited delirium state related to severe intoxication from the hallucinogenic drug PCP or angel dust. Police say officers restrained Singleton and placed him in a protective wrap after he became combative with the cab driver. They see Singleton went into cardiac arrest and died in an ambulance, it says, to the hospital. The medical examiner cited heart disease exasperated by high blood pressure and thickened arteries as contributing factors in Singleton's death. Police say they're cooperating with Manhattan District Attorney's Office investigation. But it does sound like, you know, perhaps, um, I don't know. I've never seen anybody on PCP. I've only heard rumors. And so the evidence on this one, I have not seen. You know, I don't know how combative or whatever else. If he's a threat to himself and others, and you have to restrain him, and something bad happens, as long as the restraint isn't like a suffocation method. You know, and we've seen things like that, so I'm out on that one. It's an interesting town name here. And where this story comes from, Delphi, Indiana. Wow. Never knew there was a Delphi, Indiana. I didn't either. Former treasury of an Indiana town's youth baseball league is facing charges for alleged, allegedly embezzling funds. Wow. Okay. Uh, Janelle L. Workinger, 34, of Delphi, Indiana was arrested August 20th on charges that she had allegedly paid personal bills from the bank account of the Delphi Youth Baseball League of which she was formerly the treasury. That's just sad. That's just like taking candy from a baby. It is. It's robbing little people. Oh, we're sorry. We can't get you new uniforms this year. You have to just wear those old ones that you're, you know, almost grown out of now. But, you know, it's how you play the game. Get in there and do a good job, guys. Right. As they go running off laughing to the bank. I mean, this is just it's foul. Stealing from children. How low does it get? How do you pray? Kim Jong Un's channel, uh, KCTV, uh, today was 
I, I saw one, our leader loved by the people. I, it was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I really like watching that channel. It's pretty. Yeah, they had um, uh, a musical uh, contest that uh, I actually found myself getting wrapped into and uh, watched that yesterday. It was, it was about an hour long, and I, although I don't speak Korean, I couldn't understand the um, words, but the music was great. Yeah, I love the accordion. Lots of accordion, yeah. Yeah, I think um, Weird Al needs to do a tour over there. He would go over well with his accordion show, you know, and he's got the new album, Mandatory Fun. Well, I think that's just what the Supreme Leader awesome. needs to order up there yes. for his people. So, um, Mandatory Fun. Yeah, I think that would be beautiful. Show us some love. I want to see Weird Al Yankovic on North Korea news. Yeah, that'd be that'd be that'd be neat. I'd like to see his show, anyways. So I'm sure that's a great show. A lot of great videos. Mandatory fun, I think, had oh over six million views last I saw on uh, word crimes. That is just it's interesting, isn't it? It's neat. I like that because it shows a lot of awareness. Sacramento elder law attorney charged with financial elder abuse. Sick. This is uh, Sacramento, California, obviously, uh, from sacbee.com. Oh, I don't know if this had to be. Sacramento attorney whose website extols his expertise in championing the elderly and ensuring they are not taken advantage of was arraigned. Thursday on felony charges of financial elder abuse, grand theft, and securities fraud. Attorney Delbert Joe Modlin, 63, who is being held on $500,000 bail since his arrest Tuesday, agreed to stop practicing law and seeing clients until the criminal proceedings are complete. The exchange bail or in exchange, bail was reduced to $100,000 for the attorney who has been licensed to practice law in California since 1987. Wow. Do you hear that thunder here? I mean, it's just an amazing night. I think it's revelation. Well, yeah, we'll hope that the, uh, the uh, internet doesn't go down um, during the course, of course. But uh, let's see. Mylon's appearance is... In a uh, orange jumpsuit. Beautiful. Oh, that's a nice picture there. Uh, well, there's no actual picture, but picturing attorneys in orange jumpsuits. I love it. Sacramento Superior Court. <coughs> and his identification as a lawyer uh, drew gasps and whispered comments from audience members. I bet. Oh, they're calling it the. They're calling the. Uh, court watches their uh, audience members. Absolutely, and, and it's Right, in accordance with the uh, Court Science Institute. Absolutely, and the gesture in the orange suit, the orange cap, this is interesting. He did not enter a plea Thursday. Mylon already faces criminal charges in Placer County, where he was accused in 2011 of defrauding a frail elderly couple from Auburn and selling their home and assets without their approval. This is awful. He's just Oh my God. He's been, people. and those charges have been sitting there since 2011, and right. these elderly people have been waiting three years for. Sick. Oh man. I mean, you don't have that time. Three years is a lot of time when you're elderly. Absolutely. They could be very well passed away by now. Who knows? Uh, both criminal cases were filed by the California Attorney General Bureau of. Medical fraud and elder abuse. Prosecutor Stephen Money said after the hearing that his boss, Attorney General Kamala Harris, is committed to protecting elderly victims who are some of our most vulnerable citizens. Absolutely. And who better than an attorney would know that? Yeah. There are many ways to commit <laughs> elder abuse, said Money. <laughs> yeah, he knows them all too, right? But no one, not even an attorney, is exempt. Well, of course not. Now they aren't. 
Milan's attorney, Michael Farley of Folsom, I wonder if he's related to Chris Farley, declined to talk in detail about the case, saying the matter is complicated. Complicated. Mm hmm. He noted, though, that even attorneys should take great precautions. Precautions? in dealing with the elderly clients or people with mental health issues can find themselves unfairly accused of abuse. Oh, that guy's a sicko too. He's protecting them. Oh, that's sick. Uh, unless you're cautious. He was telling him, don't get caught. Yeah. That's yeah. sick. I plan to investigate all the evidence, get to the bottom of whatever happened, and give everyone their day in court, Farley says. Maybe. I picture this guy looking like Chris Farley from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, but the dark one, because yeah. Chris Farley was so sweet. I really like his character. Yeah, well, I think he just became uh, Rob Ford. Maybe. Pretty bad. Uh, the new case against Milan revolves around the attorney's treatment last year of a 90-year-old former North Highlands man and his daughter, then 66, who lives in Elk Grove. Sick. According to court papers, Milan already was acquainted with the family when he became their estate planner last year following a coincidental meeting. Yeah, coincidental. Mm -hmm. yeah. He advised the elderly man to liquidate all his investments. He was preying on him. And persuaded the daughter to invest $120,000 in a new cat litter box. Sick! Modern yeah. allegedly had invented. What the heck? That's sick. <laughs> it was a cat litter box that he invented. Oh, he'll sell anybody. He's worse than a used car salesman. One hundred twenty thousand dollars for a cat litter box. He's a snake oil salesman. Milan told the woman he would double her investment in four years, according oh. to the attorney general's declaration in support of the arrest warrant. Oh, this is sick. I think I'm sick. What Milan failed to tell them, according to the state, is that he was awaiting trial on felony charges in Placer County, that he had a severe gambling problem. Ah. Uh, so and he that. On, on elderly to go gamble. That's sick. And that he filed for bankruptcy protection in 2004 uh, and 2012. He's horrifying. Court records show. The state's investigator determined that Milan failed to disclose information that a reasonable, prudent investor would consider significant. That's sick. Yeah, he needs to go be a citizen elsewhere. Milan, who has multiple websites, lists his office address as McClellan on the former Air Force Base in North Highlands, although Mooney said he has since moved to Howe Avenue. His online biographies say he served in the Air Force, and he went on to become a passionate elder advocate who has been protecting the elderly for decades. Yeah. He's been protecting them to death. He's CIA, and he's been protecting them to death. Oh, that's good to see a predator off the street. Delbert Modlin is one of those attorneys that most people thought no longer existed. Sick. This says... Uh, we, we knew this, though. One web page states, rather than being concerned about how large his financial portfolio can become, he concerns himself with protecting the rights of his elderly clients. Yeah, it's a commercial for him. That guy's doing a commercial for the psycho. He has found a passion in elder law that few other attorneys can match. Yeah, he's a predator. A very, very efficient predator. The state paints a different picture. One... The Attorney General claims Marlon is lying, uh, trying to erase. The state claims that Marlon, facing bankruptcies and allegations of criminal activity, hired a firm to clean his presence on the Internet and manipulate search engines to obscure the negative details. Oh, wow. This included creation of a new website with testimonials about his experience, expertise, and compassion for elders, the document states. Case against Milan in Placer County is expected to go to trial later this year or early next year, according to the Attorney General's office. In 2011, the state charged him with multiple felony counts in his handling of money and property belonging to the elderly Auburn couple he needs to be in jail. who had deteriorating health. Oh, is he in jail now? He needs to be sick. Yeah. Well, he had, what did it say there? said, uh, 
what was he uh, bailed out? Yeah, he had his bail reduced to a hundred thousand okay. dollars thanks to his buddy uh, attorneys there. Yeah, that's just sick. So everybody be on the look lookout for him. Where was that at? At the Sac B? And there's that's no in Sacramento, California. There's no picture, but I urge everybody to uh, Google him and find out what he looks like so you can avoid that guy. It sounds really, really predatory. Really nasty yeah, he one there. He shouldn't be what was that? Sleep. Ghostbusters? We had Attorney Busters. Yeah. Yeah, that was a real nasty one there. <laughs> Sick. Let's see, Ebola virus mutated during the uh, course of this outbreak. Uh, this is according to the Washington Post. The Ebola virus sweeping through West Africa has mutated repeatedly during the current outbreak, a fact that could hinder diagnoses and treatment of the devastating disease, according to science, uh, scientists who have genetically sequenced the virus in scores of victims. Findings published Thursday in the journal Science also offered new insights into the origins of the latest and most deadly Ebola outbreak in history, which has killed more than 1,500 people in four countries and showed few signs of slowing. It's also provided another reminder of the deep toll the outbreak has taken on health workers and others in the affected areas as five of the papers, more than 50 co-authors, died from Ebola before publication. Holy cow! Wow, that's really sad. In uh, collaboration led by scientists at Harvard University and aided by officials at Sierra Leone's health ministry, researchers sequenced Ebola viruses genomes from 78 patients beginning in the early days of the outbreak this spring. Those 99 samples, some patients were tested more than once, suggesting that the outbreak began with a single human infection before spreading rapidly like a spark that grows into a wildfire. Absolutely. I mean, that was, what was it, general counsel and their doctors trying to dose humanity and it got out of hand. They're just sick. Ebola's arrival in Sierra Leone in May started with a funeral. According to Thursday's findings, a young pregnant woman tested positive for the virus and was treated at the Kenema government, government Hospital. Health workers who traced her contacts discovered that she and more than a dozen other women recently had attended the burial, uh, burial of traditional healer who had been treating Ebola patients near the Sierra Leone Guinea border. All of them had been infected. Sad. Yeah, so he was trying to use some kind of witch doctor remedy and, and then he ended up dying. They, they realized uh, she was not an isolated case, said Partis Sabeti an associate professor at Harvard whose lab sequenced the Ebola genomes and quickly made public the data earlier this summer. Genomic sequence also offers hints as to how the Ebola Zaire strain at the heart of the current outbreak, one of uh, five types of Ebola virus known to infect humans, likely ended up in West Africa in the first place. Researchers said the data suggests that the virus spread from an animal host, possibly bats, and that diverged around 2004 from an Ebola strain in Central Africa where previous outbreaks have occurred. We don't actually know where the virus has been since then, said Sabeti, referring to the time between 2004 and the virus uh, resurfaced earlier this year. We're trying to piece together in a you know, historical record. Thursday's study also details hundreds of genetic mutations that make the current Ebola outbreak different from anything in the past. Some of those changes have the potential to affect the accuracy of diagnostic tests or the effectiveness of vaccines and treatment on the development of the disease. We've uncovered more than 300 genetic clues about what sets this outbreak apart from previous outbreaks. Stephen Geyer, on the study's co-author, uh, one of the study's co-authors and an infectious disease researcher at Harvard said in an, an announcement about the findings. Although we don't know whether these differences are related to the severity of the current outbreak by sharing these data with research community, we hope to speed up our understanding of this epidemic and support global efforts to contain it. 
Zabadi said researchers are expecting to receive additional Ebola samples soon from Nigeria. They plan to sequence those as well and release this data as soon as possible. The fact that we can do this in real time while the outbreak is still uh, going on is breathtaking, said Anthony Fossey, director of National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases at the National Institute of Health, said of the group's rapid genomic sequencing of the virus which he said could have taken two years or longer in the past we didn't have this technology years ago what they did was really extraordinary uh, Fossey said Thursday's findings also underscored the necessity to get the outbreak under control before the Ebola virus continues to morph and then here's the uh, uh, outbreaks chart from 1976 to 2014. Let's see, you can see 76 was um, last worst one, and then um, some bad ones in 1995, 2000, 2007. Of course, this one is the worst yet on record, 2014. General Council is So, yeah, so that's continuing to be a um, gro growing ongoing problem here and uh, we uh, don't see the end in sight yet we could clear up some things about the um, the other day that the, the nine-year-old uh, accidentally shot her teacher after he handed it her uh, Uzi and um, I wanted to clear up a little bit because that's that's just it's it's ridiculous on its face yeah it's opened up a lot of discussion obviously across the internet and news media outlets and such well he wasn't a very good teacher and this was a horrifying accident that poor child is traumatized because somebody an idiot gave her an Uzi knowing you know we talked about the, the kickback and and all of that. I wanted you to kind of speak that to the listeners. You know, I, I, those things are said to kick back, or um, you know, we can. It was just so. Well, sad they to have. See. They will. You know, they they're gonna they're gonna pull to. Uh, you know, one side and up. It's just the physics of it, and that's what happened. The gun got away from her went up, um, you know, over her head to where her instructor was. So, I mean, even if he was a great instructor, that, um, that one split moment there in uh, not uh, keeping the eye on the ball, I mean, that's, that's how all accidents happen. It's just... Nothing intentional. Um, no, we're just. I, I've seen a lot of cry with this one for gun control and things like that. And I wanted you to clarify because it's not about uh, controlling guns or gun control or anything else. This was a very idiotic individual. They handed the child to an Uzi, and a child cannot possibly control that kind of a, a weapon. It doesn't have the strength. The child doesn't have the strength to control something like that. It. Uh, she doesn't have. Uh, the reflexes, she's not, you know, it's just so many things, and, and um, just sad to see, sad to see. Yeah, well, I mean, that's definitely one of the risks in that occupation, obviously, and I don't really don't know what else to say about it. It was an accident. I don't like them opening up the discussion and having, uh, you know, Larry Pratt in there, who's, of course, you know, he's for your gun rights, but, I mean, he's a law merchant. He wants to sell you your gun rights. Right? Right. We were talking about Larry Pratt earlier, and, um, yeah, he's uh, the... Uh, well, let's see, what is he? he, he he's, he's listed as a terrorist on the Southern Poverty Law Center, but those individuals are part of CIA presentations. Uh, we have found since 
uh, book four of the um, church committee reports, uh, supplementary detailed staff reports on foreign and military intelligence. And so this guy, he parades around for, you know, as just a, a presentation. He's an actor. And, uh, of course, the FBI says, well, we are the extremists in their 2012 report. And this guy is likely either a paid informant or an FBI agent or both or many, many things. And um, we see that a lot. But um, he's a false flag for sure on many people. And we saw that, too. He sounds like uh, he's, he's kind of in the same employ as that sheriff, uh, Matt. Constitutional that sheriff sounds like they're in the same uh, group of FBI agents. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's it's just the uh, other side of the dichotomy. The um, fact is that all roads not under the public law lead to Rome. That's it. We did a whole show on that topic and. Um, that's why it says in the New Testament that the uh, path is wide, but the gate is narrow. Absolutely. You know, in entertainment, you know, there's, we used to watch um, uh, Saturday Night Live and, and things like that, and Letterman and all that. Paul Schaefer is about to lose his job. I just saw this come out on the Daily Beast, and um, it's interesting. It says, like an increasing number of baby boomers, Paul Schaefer will be 65 and out of a job next year. Actually, it's much more than a mere job. It's his lifelong vocation, granted really half his life, the beating heart of his self-identity and his dependable sanctuary of fellowship and fun, the sudden absence of which might be compared to a death of a treasured friend. Quote, how, well, how can you grieve when you've had such a long run, Schaefer asked me over dinner at Remy. It was interesting to see because human beings are taught to seek title and in such they, they seek a vocation rather than what Jesus taught in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 7, be as you are. And in that they, they do, they go through all of the stages of grieving when they lose a job or retire or whatever. And this is not healthy for any human to experience. and. It was neat to see the Daily Beast actually reporting on on the um, humanity of it all. Which is interesting. Um, hopefully, we can everyone will not find their niche, but will realize their actual actuality, the self, uh, what you already are what your hands do, what you're capable of, and um, all of those things are, you know, it's a, it's a long journey, but it's a, it's a beautiful revelation or set of them. Um, the uh, Huffington Post is reporting on the Ferguson police chief, quote, now I'm internationally the bad guy, comma, that hurts, end quote. That's huh. just like a slap in the face for him to pretend to be the victim here and whining about being the bad guy. He's a racist. They were all racist. They shot an 18-year-old child who happened to be black, and I believe that was a target. They had no other pers purpose to shoot him other than if the child was a target of corporate policy. And playing the victim now just it irritates me when they do that in the media and, and attempt to play the victim. Oh, it hurts my feelings that everybody thinks that I'm bad. I my feelings are just so hurt now. Well, we're not going to play that game. A, a child was murdered. Period. End of story. Let's deal with that. Let's deal with that. I mean, it's just. Uh, simple yeah yeah that's what it comes down to in the public law there's evidence or there's not okay did he murder somebody it doesn't matter what kind of costume you have on 
murder is murder. Right? Now that tape that came out shows that there was a pause in the shooting. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's very telling. But after the pause, he continued to shoot, didn't he? Right. And so he was unarmed. Did, he was that, unarmed. Right. And that indicates uh, thought or uh, forethought and intent. And that those are the elements required for a criminal charge against somebody. Did, did you have time to think? Were, were your actions when you killed that human being in self-defense? One. Two is if you want to make a claim of self-defense, did you have time to think? Did you have time to do all of these things? And, and Michael Brown was unarmed. Pausing just makes it worse for them. It's, a, it's further evidence that the crime was perpetrated <coughs> with knowledge and a forethought because he had knowledge that he was not armed. And with time to think, of course, it, it turns into the criminal action of murder. There was no self-defense there. There was no reason. Well, let's see here. In the world news, I got um, this um, headline here from Blacklisted News. IMF approves $1.39 billion bailout payment to Ukraine. Uh, the International Monetary Fund on Friday approved the latest payment to Ukraine in its $17 billion bailout program providing a critical boost to Kiev as it faces military, economic, and political threats. Well, who put them into this uh, position in the first place? Them. Fourth generation warfare, always. Always, always. But the, these people, they claim this, and they claim that, and they claim this. It's just cool. You know, I, I urge everybody to look at the... the um, it's interesting. Sorry, I was watching uh, breaking news off of Reuters, and it's reporting exclusive Bitcoin promoter to plead guilty to unlicensed money transmission. Now, remember back in October when the FBI took or the federal government took over Bitcoin? They yeah. were trying to cash in on all of these things, and this is a side deal uh, that everybody needs to be aware of. I mean, this is the federal government now manipulating what is obviously, evidently a um, form of when federal government's doing it, uh, counterfeit money, because they're exchanging it, of course, in the uh, market along with uh, QCIP ability and all of those things, and so when they're converting those funds, that's where they get in trouble, and, and uh, this is evidence actually of uh, feds converting, so unlawfully converting those funds. So. We need to take care of that. Um, sorry about that. It just came up on my right radar. Well, Chelsea Clinton is leaving her fake job at NBC, I guess. I saw that. I didn't even know that she was working for NBC because I don't pay attention to that one. Um, you know, her parents are fouling off. But uh, I did see that come through, and she wants to give it all up to go work for their foundation. Uh, it sounds like, once again, poor Hillary and Bill, hungry poppers, as everybody knows, uh, based on their financials, uh, they need those donations, so Chelsea's going to go work for their foundation. Yeah, and she's six months pr pregnant, and um, in another three months, we'll have another Clinton in the world. How wonderful, huh? I'm not going to comment because most of the time babies are, are blessings and stuff, but uh, from that brood, I'm not so sure. Would not be uh, possibly the child of Satan. I mean, look at their positions. Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, and uh, Bill Clinton was the mouthpiece for Congress. And, of course, they're both attorneys. And... Uh, not so sure if I want more Clintons in the world. Kind of a scary thought for any children growing up near that one. Well, I think they've got room for them over there in North Korea. Somewhere other than. They're building a Clinton estate out in North Korea right now. That would be beautiful. That would be beautiful. 
NATO accuses Russia of violating Ukraine's sovereignty. Like, yeah. like any of these foreign states have any sovereignty. It's just a word they throw out there. No, n none of these foreign states, the foreign state, the Confederacy, the uh, you know the uh, United States of America, United States Inc. at all, UN even, none of them have any sovereignty. No. They just say they do, and you go along with it because they're bigger than you right. or something. Any, anybody that's acting under uniform commercial code or code in any way is already outside of the sovereignty equation because those are acts of commerce and private acts. That's all they are. Uh, and a related story from CNN. Uh... Don't mess with Russia, Putin warns. We're a powerful nuclear nation. After saying he doesn't want any large-scale conflicts, the Russian president noted that Russians, uh, Russia is a strengthening, uh, is strengthening uh, our nuclear deterrence forces. Right, and that's good if if they're strengthening a deterrence force. Uh, but it doesn't sound like they are because they just attacked the Ukraine through their corporation recently, and, and uh, that doesn't sound like they're using it in the uh, manner of the public law, and, and that's what is required. It has to be good for citizens. can't be good for corporations. Joan Rivers, who's 81, of course, uh, She's been on a pro-Israel tirade and uh, kill all the Palestinian children tirade, more or less. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, karma's come around to, to bite her. She uh, suffered uh, uh, cardiac and respiratory arrest under the knife in a procedure in the hospital. Wow. This condition is listed as serious. Wow. After all those other surgeries. This is uh, interesting. Well, yeah, if she dies now, she'll be a good looking corpse. Yeah. So she's got that going for her. Let's see here on ChicagoTribune.com. Uh, former Cook County employee stole $300,000 from. Blood grant, say the feds. <coughs> wow. Uh, former Cook employee in charge of maintaining a $10.3 million federal grant intended for people affected by flooding has been accused of stealing about 300000 from the program. Barry Kroll, 45, of Montgomery, was charged with wire fraud and federal program theft Wednesday in a grand jury indictment said federal prosecutors in a release this afternoon. According to the indictment, Kroll, who worked as a program manager for Cook County's Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, hired a nonprofit corporation to perform services that were eligible to be paid through flooding grant funds. Kroll arranged the nonprofit organization Strategic Management Services SMS LLC as well as three other businesses to submit false documents inflating the amount they were owed. In return, the companies would get kickbacks, pocketing portions of the grant money, said prosecutors. Specifically, Kroll hired strategic management to perform damage assessments and inspections for homes eligible under the grant. The company would then indicate it had performed work but the invoices overstated the number of homes and the amount of work done, said prosecutors. Also charged in the indictment was Ronald Ford, 57, of Country Club Hills, uh, and Ford, who operated strategic management. He was charged with conspiracy and federal program theft, said prosecutors. Crow would have strategic management and the other companies involved in the scheme. Submit invoices to another nonprofit company other than Cook County for payment. Sick. And Cook County's calling itself a nonprofit company as well. That's interesting. 
In total, about $741,000 worth of invoices were submitted under Kroll's watch from 2010 and 2011. The nonprofit would then get paid through uh, the county, said prosecutors. Kroll also found ways to get funding from outside vendors, including being employed as an independent contractor for one of the companies for two years with an annual salary of $70,000, said prosecutors. You just sit, you, you, you look at that, and they are, you know, the, the, the profits. You look at, you go back to um, the false prophet, and um, they just completely perverted that word you know, with Paul and Saul of Tarsus. Remember, he was running around as a tax man. He was a quote, prophet, P R O F I T, instead of P R O F P H E T. It's, they're just, they're satanic. Absolutely. I mean, they. they they are back to back. Here's all these attorneys that are preying on elderly, and now they're preying on funds, and they just raise everything. They just play. Uh, prosecutors say Crow used the stolen funds toward his mortgage payments for rental property he owned in Yorksville and for the purchase of a condo unit. He also paid his credit card bills, homeowner association fees, and automobile loans. Crow, who was arrested Wednesday, was scheduled to appear in court at Dirksen U.S. Courthouse. Ford was scheduled to appear in court Friday at an arraignment hearing. Crow hasn't been an employee of the county since at least May of 2011, according to the press secretary, Karen Vaughn. So, get on in there, little shirties. Yeah, thank goodness they're being picked up. Yeah. Yucky. Yes, round them all up now. This is the attorney surety headline roundup news. Okay, arrest warrant issued for teacher accused of sex assault on a child, say to the police. An arrest warrant has been issued for a Lake Forest man who is accused of sexually assaulting a child under the age of 13, oh. according to the Lake County Sheriff's Department. Again, we're in Lake County here, huh? Good. It's uh, Illinois. Good. Lake right? County Sheriff looks like it's protecting humanity. Again, from the Chicago Tribune. The man in question, identified by authorities as Michael R. Vusick, 41, of the 100 block of East Laurel Avenue, is a teacher with Galvin School District, 37, uh, in that's School District 37, in Ingleside, According to Sheriff's Department press release and the district website, police believe Vucic may have fled to Germany. According to the release, wow! So he's on the run. And uh, where is this located? Because I, I think that the the picture was in that one, so people can be on the lookout for this guy. Yeah, it's from ChicagoTribune.com under uh, breaking breaking news, I guess, and then. Um, and you'll see it come up there. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. He's wa he's wanted on charges of predatory criminal sexual assault and criminal sexual assault, according to the sheriff's new release. The release said a girl reported to her grandparents on Monday that Vucic had had inappropriate sexual contact with her multiple times in 2012 when she was under the age of 13. Galvin School District 37 officials confirmed Vucic is a teacher at Galvin South Middle School and said they are cooperating with police after learning of the investigation Tuesday. Vucic is banned from school property, Good. according to the news release from the district. The alleged victim is a former student of the district, which includes a middle school and elementary school, according to the news release. School district officials will not comment further pending the investigation. Anyone with information about Vucic's whereabouts or the possibility of other alleged victims is asked to call the Sheriff's Department. It's um, United States Country Code and then 847-549-5200. Okay. And so he's suspected to maybe be in Germany. So if we have any listeners out there in Germany, 
Uh, you can get his picture here, and let's see, he's bald, and uh, yeah, he's over the radio. It's probably not a good idea to just. Yeah, I'm not very good at. Uh, yeah, because if we, we we go ahead and describe any wanted individual, he looks a lot like everybody. So we don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, he's a guy, and <laughs> he has eyes and ears. He's got two eyes. Yep. Yeah. Be easier just to, uh, you know, I should have tattoos for all the teachers so you can identify them as a teacher at least, right? Well, and there's not supposed to be any according to everything that we've gone through because of the indoctrination uh, aspect of the protocols of these Confederates. Yeah, yeah, speaking of that, let's see here, BrowardPalmBeach.com. This is out of, uh, Florida, Broward County, Florida, and again back to this uh, DUI judge. Uh, <laughs> let's see, uh, Giesel Pollack, Broward DUI judge fights to save her career. Oh, you've been covering this one since last year. She's been in and out of the pokey and all sorts of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Interesting. What's going on now? Well, let's see here. Um... So she is a uh, uh, Broward County Circuit Judge and Misdemeanor Drug Court Judge, Giesel Pollock, who was arrested on suspicion of driving under the influence in early May, is now fighting to save her career after her attorney filed a document to the Florida Supreme Court this week. The document specifically addresses the investigation panel of the Florida Judicial Qualifications Commission, which submitted a notice of formal charges against Pollock following her May arrest. Pollock's attorney argue that her arrest was the result of her struggle with alcohol dependence, but that she was actively receiving treatment. That's her attorney, so she but has a, she has multiple attorneys. Yeah, but if she's actively receiving treatment, she was found drunk. It's kind of contrary to the. Uh, premise that she's actively seeking treatment and when you first started covering this she's a judge that had the meltdown on the bench right and let's see here the formal charges against her however are multiple and document a string of incidences that compromise her job as a judge last year Pollock 56 admitted showing up to work drunk in the past when her staff tried to stop her from approaching the bench inebriated, her response was, uh, blank you, you're fired. She took a leave of absence a couple months ago when she again arrived to work inebriated. Back in March, Pollock was behaving radically in the courtroom and at times slurred her words. Her meltdown on the bench led Pollock to take personal leave and shortly thereafter, check herself into a, an outpatient treatment program in Weston. Her DUI arrest in May led to her being suspended and she entered into rehab. Following her suspension in May, Pollock's, journey filed, or Pollock's attorneys filed a petition with the Florida Supreme Court this week requesting that Pollock still be paid her $138,000 annual salary. For what purpose? She she needs to go take a break elsewhere since she's a, uh, a drunk and not capable of being a judge. David, I uh, see David Bogenschultz said Pollock's uh, uh, bout with alcohol meant it was a disability under the Americans with Disabilities Act. So they're trying to protect her? Yeah, yeah, they're trying to... It's okay for her to be drunk and a threat to society. She can... Maybe all of the judges should be high. That's what's been happening all this time before this. It, it's no surprise. Uh, you know, these here who are acting under private acts and acts of commerce are trying to protect one another right. under private acts and acts of commerce. Absolutely. And look at that guy, the, the, the judge in, in uh, Illinois last year that killed his buddy, the other judge, the, the guy that died of a heroin overdose. Yeah. He was never charged with that murder. In the petition, Pollock's alcoholism was compared to cancer. Oh, 
goodness. Oh See, goodness. I mean, this is what they... Sick. Yeah, this is how they Weirdo. try to twist the reality here with their mumbo-jumbo legal attorney work product doctrine yeah, nonsense. Can't, I can't help myself being drunk. It's like having cancer. A suspension without pay will work an onerous hardship and onerous, be emotional. Yeah. Onerous, yeah. A hardship and be emotionally dil uh, debilitating as she struggles to overcome the dis disability and disease, the petition reads. Oh my goodness. If in fact Judge Pollock had been suffering from cancer or another disability that required her to be out of the office in treatment or therapy, such a restriction would have not been appropriate. What a joke. The petition was rejected by the Florida Supreme Court, which Yay. is good. Now comes the fight. For her lawyers to save her career. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so there's more uh, there to read. The breakdown of all of her insane antics. path here and antics that led her to this terrible situation. And yeah. And we just feel so, so sorry for her Absolutely. here at the How public many? law. How many human beings did she traffic? Here's a judge trafficking human beings forever, now claiming that alcoholism is like cancer. How many people has she put in rehab? How many people has she ordered into the pokey? How many victims has she preyed on? And, and not only from that end, but the other side itself as well. Your corporate counsel perpetrating fourth generation war warfare against these human beings that ultimately turn to drugs and alcohol to escape the farm that these attorneys have everybody on. And it's just, it's, talk about speaking out both sides of the mouth. Hypocrisy. Oh, Matthew 23. Jesus said that, didn't he? Woe unto you hypocrites! Love that because he screamed that one many times. Interesting. Clean the inside of your cup, honey. Well, Obama's no strategy yet. Comment on ISIS and Syria sparks a political uproar. Of course, he got hammered for that uh, different colored suit that he wore today. Did you see that? What did you think about that? Yeah, I was a... They were comparing him to a used car salesman? Absolutely. And it was a, it was a PR stunt. You know, trying to make him look like Mr. Rogers. Uh, he can't look like Mr. Rogers. He, he likes to kill people and stuff. Brown suit isn't going to color away his... his, uh... being a very, very icky attorney and mouthpiece for Congress, fall guy. No matter what you put on him. Where was that one, um, oh goodness, earlier today, somebody was reporting he's out golfing again. He's just a, a braggart and, uh... Oh, he was reported to have been, uh, fist bumping and all the rest of it. He was on the field, and then um, somebody had a question for him about uh, the uh, Gaza situation. He says, don't bother me with that here. I'm playing golf. I guess he's a foul. Where, where is he? Is he, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, like brain damage and drugs and things. Have you ever seen anything like this? He's just all over the place now. Well, we know. He even went to Ferguson, didn't do anything there. He's, just, he's off in La La Land, like they have him doped up or something. Maybe he's on some of these prescriptions. Yeah, I don't know, but he better do something about that graying hair. He does look older. But, uh, yeah, he's also inflicted that upon countless others across the globe since his... Uh, rise to the dictatorship. Absolutely. You know what I like about um, you know North Korea? At least they call him what he is, the dictator. Right. You know here they they paint him uh, you know as a you know with pretty words such as president, commander in chief, 
uh, you know, golf player extraordinaire. Uh, I like to call him the attorney in chief. But you know, uh, at least they don't lie in North Korea. They say our, our, uh, you know, glorious our glorious leader, leader dictator Kim Jong Un, <coughs> and they love him. They love him for these, uh, you know, because he doesn't he doesn't harm the humans. He doesn't have any human rights violations. The, the United States, the good old boys club of uh, Amer America, has has human rights violations like you wouldn't believe. I mean, that's all they do is prey on humanity. And yeah, and so, so from your uh, Twitter page here, you, you got a tweet here, it looks like, uh, from Chuck Nellis. Uh, yeah, I thought that was just, oh, that picture was so... Here, Yeah, here's a picture of Obama, and he's doing a big march step here with his golf club on the golf course. Max executions um, by ISIS, and Obama works on his golf game. Yeah, he's just ignorant of everything that's going on around him, and there's, there's every day, uh, all over Twitter, I'm seeing pictures of this guy, and it, it honestly looks like Obama's high or drugged up or something. He's not with anything that's going on around him. Have you noticed that? I mean, he's Well, that guy lost. that claims to be his uh, previous gay lover or whatever uh, said that they, you know, smoke crack together and I mean, all the rest of it. It just gets more and more weird as it goes along because this guy's just like, you know, out of it. I don't know if he's... I don't know if he uses drugs. I mean, that, that one um, singer guy, he said he's done pot in the White House, but it didn't indicate that, you know, Obama was with him. But obviously. Oh, yeah. Was that Snoop Dogg? I'm not sure. I don't remember now. But uh, whoever it was that, that uh, I guess there's a song called Puff or something. I don't know. Maybe Puff Daddy or whatever. I don't know. And then, yeah, and then they come in with a possible threat against Obama investigated by the Secret Service. So they're making him try, trying to make him out as, as being important here. Um, you know, but my goodness, he's, he's gone. You can't buy back his friends by claiming that he's going to be attacked or something. I mean, I don't think that's going to make humanity move in any direction to rush to save him or throw their lives on the line save the president that's being threatened I mean these things are it's just crazy so that cop in Ferguson that made the threats you know with the uh, assault rifle pointed at the people saying that he's gonna blank and kill a uh, kill ya right. he, he resigned all good Good. He didn't get his retirement or anything, did he? Yeah, 20, yeah he's a 20-year veteran, and, he, and he's resigning right now. He's thinking he's going to get his retirement. What do you bet's going to happen to that retirement? Oh, boy. Sad to be you. Sad, sad, sad days. Uh, did you see they were going after Boyner today? I thought that was uh, quite profound. Um, apparently, he... Speaker of the House there um, has been avoiding taxes. No. Boehner, camp profit from corporate bid to avoid U.S. tax, reads the headline at Bloomberg. Two top Republican lawmakers profited from corporate tax avoidance maneuver that the U.S. Treasury Department is seeking to curb while U.S. House Speaker John Boehner and Ways and Means Committee Chairman Dave Camp have resisted calls for the crackdown on companies adopting overseas addresses to pay lower taxes. Both have made money off one of the details. They also are one of the, de one of the deals. Yeah, okay. They uh, also have investments at risk of losing value because of government action. Two lawmakers reported the sale of stock in Covidian PLC within nine days of uh, Medtronic Inc. saying 
it was planning a takeover, an announcement that set Dublin base Covidence shares near a 52 week high. Right, and that, that's insider trading because, you know, it's on its face. Yeah. Within nine days of uh, Medtronic saying it was planning a takeover, they're reporting the sale of stock. Uh, and this is just, uh, yeah, interesting. The deal, one of several that have sparked a national debate over U.S. corporate tax policy, would put the combined company's headquarters in Ireland and reduce its tax rate. Oh, there you go. There's Boyer, the Speaker of the House, going to plant a corporation over in Ireland. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. To now, all isn't the, he the one that the said he was going to bring the charges against Obama? Absolutely. And, and this is directed to all the patriots. Who are you patronizing if one removes these things to uh, Ireland? I mean, this is just all a facade. Don't look at the guy. We the would person. not wish that upon Ireland whatsoever. We do Absolutely not wish to not. Um, no. to uh, push uh, this U.S. congregators over there. Right. It's bad enough that they're even on the same planet with you people. But. Right, and that, that's something that, that the public law enforcement actually stopped recently. Um, Scotland did not go into independent state, and that, that was so beautiful to see because they had actually been moving their federal law enforcement into Scotland, and I'm like, excuse me, to, to the public law enforcement, and I said, look, uh, we want to curb this um, as this is a danger to Scotland, and, and um, you know, I've been asking around, and I haven't heard any more information on the uh, presence of Confederate agents on the ground. But uh, they did not vote to go independent, which is beautiful to see. Glad they weren't taken over. Right, by. because um, as we've discussed here in the past, uh, the definition of the Patriots want to espouse uh, on independence is just not true. It's not the opposite of uh, pendant. Right. It's independent. It's an yeah. independent state. And, and it's always been the same um, thing. I mean, just go look in Black's Law Dictionary of Secession. It says everything you need to know right there. I mean, the United States of America never seceded away from... Anywhere they have no. been seceding estates since they seceded everybody's estates, and then right. since the 1941 Atlantic Charter, it's been global, right? And, and was, also through Brenton Woods and all the rest of it. Yeah. And it was beautiful, very fun to see this last week. That uh, so far, anyway, knock on wood and all the other stuff. Um, Scotland didn't was it forced into independence or independent state, which would have allowed the uh, nice pickup of of uh, lost souls because that's what they're claiming and some uh, European bankster news HSBC awards 15 top banksters 7.1 million euros and move to sidestep bonus rules HSBC has given 15 of its top bankers fixed pay allowance arrangements worth 7.1 million under the controversial new pay scheme designed to dodge tough new European Union rules on bankers bonuses. Britain's biggest bank awarded Samir Asaf, the head of its investment bank, 1.5 million euros worth of salary of shares and chief executive Stuart Gulliver was given shares worth 850 million. Peter Wong, deputy chairman and head of the Asia Pacific region was given 760 thousand euros. What was the other one? 850,000 or 850 million? 850,000, I'm sorry. 850,000 euros. That's so sick. Uh, Peter Wong got 760,000 worth. Ian Mackey, finance director of Mark Moses, chief risk officer, got 470,000 worth. The war is a part of the uh, big banks plans to increase the basic pay of executives to sidestep tough new EU rules designed to clamp down on excessive bonuses. Yeah, yeah, of course they want to stop paying their most profitable employees. Of course, honest 
Sick. Sick for sick corporate practices. Yeah, US, UK bankers' bonuses rise twice as fast as rest of the workforce. Right. And, and another related headline. Always. And, um... See, Britain facing greatest terrorist threat in history now. Oh, yeah, pay no attention to these uh, banksters, uh, you know, giving themselves all your money. Um, you got terrorist threats you got to worry about now, folks. Emmanuel Goldstein is moving to uh, Britain. Yeah, always look out for that other guy behind the curtain. Don't look at the guy behind the curtain. Look out for that one. David Cameron. Warned, uh, Brit uh, Britain faces the greatest and deepest terror threat in the country's history. Yeah. As he pledged emergency measures to tackle extremists. UK threat level was raised to severe, its second highest, meaning that a terrorist attack is highly likely in light of the growing danger from British jihadists returning from Iraq and Syria. And what this means, folks, is they're threatening you. Okay? These are the real terrorists threatening you. David Cameron. Yeah. Prime Minister said that the risk posed by ISIL, the Islamic State of Iraq, and the Levant will last for decades and raise the prospect of an expanding terrorist nation on the shores of the Mediterranean. He disclosed that ISIL had made specific threats against the UK and did not rule out military action to tackle the growing problem. Of course, they uh, raised the threat level uh, here uh, today or yesterday as well. And yeah, so, they're, they're saying that you know Obama's at risk, uh, Chicago's at risk from ISIS, and there was evidence that the ISIS threat that was tweeted came from the old Republican building in Chicago. So it was a government worker, there was an agent somewhere just tweeting these things. And this, this, uh, this stuff is intended to put you into fear. It's psychological warfare uh, by which you rely on a parent state. More uh, British news here. Uh, George Osborne continues scamming the British taxpayer. Uh, he's come under fire for refusing to share information about party guest attending his grace and favor country home. The Treasury Department has refused to provide any information claiming the Buckingham, uh, Buckinghamshire residence is for private use. Now you got the Mafia there in New York. Um, uh, New York flaunts clout and review of Comcast deal. This is on Bloomberg. Now Andrew Cuomo has received a lot of money from uh, such as uh, Comcast and Time Warner Cable, $200,000 from the stocks. And, and this is important for everybody to realize what is going on. Now, when these corporations you're paying for your governor, they work for the corporation and not for the human being. Might be a good idea to look into what you're patronizing. Governor Cuomo, of course, uh, just recently, as a matter of fact, uh, by the evidence, sent out a subpoena to a firm that was uh, under investigation for corruption, and the minute he found out that it was his, he pulled back the subpoena. And he wasn't charged with that because the sheeple are like, okay, whatever, they're not doing anything. Makes you want to say, hello, is there anybody home? Hello? Now, Rick Perry got charged for basically doing the same thing, criminal coercion, but, um, you know, we've got to step up a bit here, folks, because this governor here is, uh, you know, not what, uh, you may be thinking he is. Yeah, let's see, Malaysian airline loses millions after MH17 and MH370. That's to be expected, right? Right. Uh, and, and Brazil slips into recession for the first time in five years. Wow. So. There was another fight over... Um, Reclining airliner seats. I mean, what what do you have to say? This is ridiculous. 
Well, yeah, that first story, I didn't read the second one, but I did see the headline. The first one I know was on a United flight, which, you know, their contract, their policy is that uh, they don't allow the use of these gadgets. And it's a gadget that's also twenty one ninety five stops the uh, uh, chair in front of you from uh, reclining. So it doesn't, you know, take up your leg room or whatever. Right, but when you're on a flight long distance, I mean, they recline for a, for a reason. Sorry, I can't do that because it won't, uh, we've got commercials playing. But, um, it's just so sad when adults can't get along with each other. But, yeah, it, it, it's, it's not allowed by their, uh, policy. I, when you, um, buy a ticket on those airlines, you're... You're, you're in contract and you're agreeing to that uh, policy. So, you know, this guy, what he thought would be a clever device for 2095, $2,195 is going to cost him uh, tens of thousands in uh, court costs. Right. The nation's, fines. the nation's reporting something very interesting today. Um, well, this is an hour ago. Groups leading the fight against marijuana law reform get a lot of money from opiate manufacturers. Is this a coincidence? The nation's report goes into depth. Um, this is the real reason pot is still illegal. Opponents of marijuana law reform insist the legalization is dangerous, but the biggest threat is to their own bottom line. And this is very interesting to um, see these things. Um, well, the war on drugs has always been about, uh, you know, the federal state not liking any competition. Absolutely. Okay, they've always, I mean, and this is, you know, evidence in those pictures from um, the poppy fields in Afghanistan. The soldiers are there uh, guarding the poppy fields, all right? And so the CIA can move them around and launder it uh, for the banks. Uh, you know, I'm sure many of you out there uh, already know this. This has been an ongoing uh, thing about the uh, war on drugs. And it's really about the war on humanity. Okay? And, you know, the... the the state coming in and asserting its parental powers under uh, Table 4, going back to the 12 tables, or you can find uh, the same thing today in Title 4, United States Code, Fourth Amendment, United States Constitution. And I'm sure it's in uh, Articles 4, you know, and all the uh, laws. Uh, Canada, Great Britain, Australia, the rest of it. It's it's just expanding on uh, the same uh, Roman political design that we're still on today. I, I mean, it's still Rome. They reorganized Rome in 1648 under the Treaty of Westphalia. Right. Yeah, there's some crazy, crazy politicians. We're about out of time. Do you have any parting words? The parting word? Well, let's see. Uh, I would, uh, let's see. Here. Let's My Fox Detroit is reporting that Detroit shut the water off on Antonio's barber shop because the business next door old money. This is how hard up these corporate counsel attorneys are. They're just absolutely foul and despicable. Well, yeah, that's a horrible, horrible thing here. I mean, Canada has been uh, donating water to uh, Detroit residents. Uh, you know, and this is all about abjuring the realm. Once you claim that role as a citizen, you're subject to the benefits. And the benefits in this case uh, uh, are your water being stolen from you and sold back to you 
by these t attorneys that are claiming ownership. Okay? You've abjured the realm as the heir to your estate when you're claiming constitutional rights and all your rights as a citizen and stuff like that. All right? I know you talked about this, uh, you know, on, on end in the past. And uh, this is the problem we're all facing, and this is why. Because we're not stepping up as the heirs. We're taking a benefit, okay? And if you read the definition of beneficium out of Black's Law Dictionary, first edition, or it doesn't matter, but uh, it's in first, I know. Um, yeah, it, it, it talks about abjuring the realm there. What do you get to everybody out with uh, Pink Floyd? Nobody home. Be well, everybody. All right, be well.